Good morning, everybody. This is another edition of the Past Ball Show brought to you by JohnPLA.com as well as St. Aloysius Church and School in Jackson, New Jersey. Glad to be with you. Um, for everybody that's watching the show live, congratulations. And basically, what are you doing up? A couple things we're going to get into today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the AFC playoff picture. I also do want to mention something about the incident that involved the wrestler that was forced to get his hair cut by the referee. Uh, NFL picks coming up a little later. I do want to play this clip before I get into my opening dialogue. I'm extremely proud and pleased to be here this afternoon, but must admit I'm going to be tremendously more pleased and more proud when I look at that third base coaching line one day and see a black face managing in baseball. Thank you very much. This is a grand moment. And is standing on the field with Andy. Now, that, of course, was Jackie Robinson, and hopefully it came out clear enough that you can hear it. If not, for the replay, I'll, I'll blow the sound up a little bit so it's a little more clear. But um, <clears throat> 1972, nine days before Jackie Robinson's death, he delivers that couple minutes where he speaks at Crosley Field in Cincinnati, game two of the World Series between the Cincinnati Reds <clears throat> and the Oakland Athletics. Kind of a little bit of a controversial moment because Jackie Robinson was disgusted, a little frustrated because of what had happened over the last series of years, 25 years at that point since Jackie Robinson has made, made his major league debut. Over that time, we still had not seen an African-American manager. Now, this was in 1972, and hope would be that as we sit here in 2018, we'd be in a better position and at least say that there are more African-American managers than there have been. The unfortunate thing is, is that hasn't happened. And it's, it's a sign that we have not gotten far enough. Now, the depths that I want to get into this is because, you know, looking at the series of teams that have done it, some two-thirds of the teams have been open-minded enough to have at least one African-American manager. There are still, at this point, <clears throat> 10 teams that have never had a black manager in Major League Baseball. And we're not just talking about the expansion teams. We're not just talking about the teams that literally just came up through the mix. Not the Rays and the Diamondbacks and the Marlins and the Rockies. And, you know, even if you want to go back a little further, the Mariners and the Blue Jays in 1977. We're not talking about expansion teams. We're talking about a lot of teams that for many, many years have existed in Major League Baseball. For many years, go back to the days of the 19th century. Go back to the inception of the American League. And as we sit here in 2018, there are still 10 teams that have never had a black manager. And that's what's it's surprising, first of all, that that's the case. But also surprising that nobody chooses to bring this up. This is not an issue that's discussed in any situation. We hear about the Rooney Rule as it applies to football, which you know is, is unfortunate that it had to go to that, to basically force you to have to interview at least one African-American candidate for every major head coach or front office job. It's worked up to a point, but it, it was, it's kind of one of those things that were forced upon the teams to do. Now, does that mean in Major League Baseball, as we sit right now, that it's something that we have to look into maybe trying to do because the ownerships and the front offices and the general managers are not doing that on their own. But I, I just think it's disgusting that we're sitting here in the year of 2018, and I'm going to call out some really high-profile teams in Major League Baseball that have never had a black manager. The Atlanta Braves have been in the National League since 1876. Before they were in Atlanta, they were in Milwaukee. Before they were in Milwaukee, they were in Boston. A team that started as, what, the Boston Bean Eaters. Once again in 1876. 
have never had a black manager. The Philadelphia Phillies, who started out in 1883, have been in the major, major leagues ever since, have never had a black manager. The St. Louis Cardinals, started in 1882, have never had a black manager. You know about the Milwaukee Brewers, who were originally the Seattle Pilots in 1969, switched from the American League to the National League in 1998, have never had a black manager. The Arizona Diamondbacks, I'm not going to blast them because they've only been in Major League Baseball since 1998, but they've never had a black manager. How about a couple of the stalwarts of the American League, teams that we think about when we think about the most accomplished the 27 World Series champion New York Yankees have never in their history had a black manager. The Boston Red Sox, four-time World Series champions in the last 15 years, nine-time World Series champions, have never had a black manager. The Detroit Tigers, another original American League team in 1901, have never had a black manager. The Washington Senators slash Minnesota Twins, original American League team, 19-1. The Oakland Athletics, who went through Kansas City, started in Philadelphia, have never had a black manager. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, 1961, expansion team, have never had a black manager. That's 10 teams in Major League Baseball. And you figure, since... 1975, when Frank Robinson became the first, it's been over 40 years. That would have been more than 19 other teams that would have at least had one. And I think it's a shame in Major League Baseball that we're still at this point. Jackie Robinson, if he was still around, would be completely disgusted. And I don't know if there is a tie between the analytics and the, you know, the, the, the change in a game. But I don't understand why there would be a correlation between one and the other. The bottom line is a, it's embarrassing. It's something that hopefully over time in Major League Baseball changes. Just a reminder, this copyright and broadcast is authorized under internet rights granted by the World Wide Web and is solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this show without the express written consent of the past ball show, JohnPielli.com and JohnPielli LLC, is prohibited. Any commercial other use of the program, such as by charging admission for a showing, is similarly prohibited. So you had a couple games yesterday to kind of make the AFC playoff picture a little more impactful. And it really is going to come down to the Steelers and the Titans and the Colts. As it looks like the Baltimore Ravens are in a very good position to succeed, maybe win the division in the AFC North. They gave a vote of confidence for their coach, John Harbaugh, who's going to be back next year. Much to the chagrin of some New York Jets fans and some other fans in the National Football League that are deciding that, hey, they they want to look for the best coach. They want that next guy to come in and lead their team. Of course, Mike McCarthy is going to be available in Green Bay. He was let go a couple weeks ago. And thought was or thought could be that possibly John Harbaugh could be leaving Baltimore. That's not going to happen. Now, I, I do think of a little bit of a weird scenario. Now, Baltimore didn't clinch themselves a playoff spot. They're very close. They win next week, and you know they're pretty much ahead in every possible tiebreaker. But you know what would happen if the Baltimore Ravens somehow lost last week and somehow ended up missing out on the playoffs? Because the Ravens, with a loss next week, are going to be nine and seven. And if they're nine and seven, either Tennessee or Indianapolis is likely to be 10 and 6. Now, looking at it this way, the Colts are in the best position. They're in the most advantageous position. They don't even have to win this week. Their game against the New York Giants doesn't even matter. And I'm going to get into this a little bit when it comes to the NFL picks. The Colts could lose this week, and still, if they win their final game against Tennessee, they're in the playoffs. If the Colts win this week, 
It doesn't put them in a better situation. They'll have the same record as the Titans, and if the Titans beat them, they don't make the playoffs. If they beat the Titans and they have the same record, they end up getting in the playoffs because a head-to-head record would have meant that they won both of their games during the regular season. So we'll talk a little bit about the NFC picture next week, but I do think it's pretty interesting. You got the Ravens, you got the Titans, and you got the Colts. Possibly with the Steelers vying for that one spot. Now, Pittsburgh has a tough game this week against New Orleans. If they somehow lose that game, that puts the Ravens in the play in the high position when it comes to the AFC North and the Steelers in the mix with the Colts and the Titans for that last playoff spot. But it's interesting to see how that ends up working out. Once again, we'll get into NFL picks in a couple minutes. Once again, this is the Pass Ball Show brought to you by JohnPielli.com as well as St. Aloysius Church and School excuse me, in Jackson, New Jersey. Um, I did want to get into this story about the wrestler who was forced to get a haircut. And the reason that this matters to me, and I don't I don't know, and, and listen, I, I guess you can make anything a uh, anything a racial issue if you want. I mean, obviously, there's a referee that happens to be white. The wrestler happens to be black. So if, if, that, if that exists, then I think the narrative could be, if it's something that you're willing to push, that it's a racial issue. I just think that this was a situation where it was just simply wrong. And I don't know if there's going to be sanctions against this referee for deciding to do what he did. But I remember wrestling with girls in middle school and high school. And, you know, it wasn't extremely common, but there was a handful of female wrestlers. And I don't remember seeing a single one cut their hair before a match, whether it was in middle school or whether it was in high school. Now, I think it was expected to be, I don't know, uh, etiquette, maybe to put your hair up. But remember, you're wearing that headgear, which, you know, if you bundle your hair up, it shouldn't be an issue. There was a couple male wrestlers that I knew that had long hair. But if it's an issue of the hair hanging out and being a distraction, there's other things you could do. You could keep the hair together. You could put it, like I said, in the headgear. You could put it, let's say, wrap it up in some sort of netting or something like that if that's the issue. And I don't know if it is. But the bottom line, I mean, a wrestler to go out there and just tell this wrestler just randomly right before his fight, it's not like it's not like it's the first time that he's wrestled with long hair. So I found it a little bit odd. Like I said, when I'm thinking about the racial implications of it, I'm not sure it was a targeting issue where the, you know, the referee didn't like black people and wanted to do something against this particular wrestler. If that's the case, then 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 that's a whole nother issue. And, and I don't know. I mean, am I willing to give the guy the benefit of the doubt? It obviously doesn't look good. The referee does not look good in this situation. There's no way you could say that it's something that, you know, the guy could say, hey, I could pull out the rule book and say that there's anything in there that requires me to cut this dude's hair. Like I said, women have been in wrestling for years, whether it's on the middle school level, high school level, sometimes the college level. I, I don't see women being forced to cut their hair to a certain length. There's been women with long hair that have managed to wrestle without having to have their hair cut during a match or before a match. So, once again, you know, you're know you looking back and forth between the two issues. I'm thinking that it's more wrong than just a blatant racial act. So that's that's pretty much where I stand on that. Uh, last thing we're going to get into, and I'll throw this one out there, this is the famous Budweiser beer. We know of no brand produced by any other brewer that costs so much to brew and age. Our exclusive Beechwood Aging produces a taste, a smoothness, and drinkability. You'll find in no beer at any cost. So we'll knock through NFL picks, and then we'll be out of your way. Kind of a quick filibuster here on the Pass Ball Show. I wanted to get one more show in before the end of the week, and of course... With the holidays coming up, I want to wish everybody Merry Christmas. Um, I know Hanukkah's passed, but Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, 
Happy New Year, even though we'll be doing a couple shows next week. And I wanted to get into the NFL picks. And once again, we're going to be pretty random with it. Stayed away from the games last night. And I was a little worried thinking about the Titans. They were in a, a matchup against the Washington Redskins. And I, I looked at it, and I tell you, for the life of me, I thought it was one of those, uh, those setups where you look at a team that seems to be heading to the playoffs, the Redskins. I know they won the week before. Uh, maybe set up in a way that the Redskins will go out there and beat the Titans. And you know, if you follow the Titans over the course of the season, you know that there's times they look great. They look like they can beat the best. They beat the Patriots. They beat the Eagles. They beat the Cowboys. They all, all games in convincing fashion. And then there's other games against the Jets and even the Giants last week. They didn't necessarily look dominant. They played a good defensive game. They ended up holding on and winning, ran the football. But there's nothing that excites you about the Titans. So I was worried about that game. First game I'm going to pick today. <coughs> Excuse me. Philadelphia Eagles at home against the Houston Texans. And once again, all picks are going to be up on JohnPielli.com. I think this game means a lot more for the Eagles. Houston Texans in a position where a win, obviously, will get them into the playoffs. Uh, the Titans win yesterday keeps their hopes of possibly winning the division alive. Um, two Houston losses and another Titans win, and then the Titans could win the division. Same thing applies for the Indianapolis Colts. They get two wins and two Texan losses and the Indianapolis Colts could win the division. So it's, it's very interesting. There's actually three teams in the mix there. Now I look at the Eagles, and they're kind of on their way back. Nick Foles, as the quarterback, seems to have a little bit of a better handle of that team's offense. And I don't know if it's a matter of you know him maybe just simply being better than Carson Wentz or him simply being a better fit as the Philadelphia Eagle quarterback. But obviously, you can't deny what he did last year in the postseason. And he has looked good since Wentz has been hurt. So give me the Eagles minus two and a half at home against the Houston Texans. Next game, I'm looking at the Giants and the Indianapolis Colts. And what jumps out at me is this line. And I understand you can look at the fact that the New York Giants have absolutely nothing to play for. And there's no doubt about it. Their loss last week to Tennessee eliminated them from the playoffs, meant that there's no way that they could finish with a winning record, though they have played better football lately. The Indianapolis Colts have been a great story for a couple of reasons. Their offensive line has solidified itself. It's given Andrew Luck protection. And you're finally seeing, first, an Andrew Luck that's healthy, second, an Andrew Luck that looks like he could be one of the best quarterbacks of this generation. And it's, it's fun football to watch. Frank Wright, is, Wright has come over there and done a great job. And this is a team that looks like it could do some damage in the playoffs. Point that I made before, though, talking about the AFC playoff picture, is this game means nothing to the Colts. The Colts will be playing next week in Tennessee as essentially their playoff game, whether they win this game or lose this game. They sit there at 8-6. and six. The only thing that could hurt them is the possibility of the Steelers winning and then the Ravens and Steelers having control of their own destiny. I could see this game being close, and the line kind of jumps out at me, 9.5. So give me the Giants plus 9.5 at Indianapolis. I bet you they could at least keep this one close. Next game we're going to talk about. How about this line? When was the last time the Cleveland Browns, whether they were home or away, got almost 10 points in a game? Or were giving it? I mean, it's a crazy spread. And once again, I'm gravitated towards it. I know Baker Mayfield and the Browns have done a good job. Give me a surprise here. I think the Cincinnati Bengals showed a little promise, a little heart last week. Obviously, Andy Dalton's out. Marvin Lewis likely 
for like the third straight year who's going to be out as the head coach. I'm, I'm leaning towards this line again. And similar to the Giants, I like the Bengals on the road getting nine and a half points against Cleveland. I'm looking for the next game because I do want to pick the big one. You know, you got the Saints and Steelers, which I will pick in a minute. But I'm trying to figure out what other game I want to jump on. Kansas City is heading to Seattle. Kansas City can lock up home field advantage. With a win, they got to do it in Seattle. And I think this is going to be a very big performance for the Seattle Seahawks. So give me Seattle plus one and a half at home against Kansas City. Finally, the Pittsburgh Steelers heading to New Orleans against the Saints. I like... The fact that the Steelers can keep this game close. The Steelers have a very good chance of making the playoffs with a win in New Orleans. They had a good enough performance last week against the Patriots. They ended up pulling that game off. But I'm leaning towards the Saints because I think the spread is just enough. I think the Saints could keep this game close, be ahead by like three or so, and maybe get that touchdown later on in a game and pull it off and win it late. So give me New Orleans, minus 6.5 at home against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Pialy's picks for this week, Philadelphia minus 2.5 at home against Houston, the New York Giants plus 9.5 at Indianapolis, not to win, but for the Colts not to cover, Cincinnati plus 9.5 at Cleveland, once again, not to win, but for Cleveland not to cover, Seattle, plus one and a half at home against Kansas City in my upset of the week. And then New Orleans, minus six and a half at home against Pittsburgh. A little recap of the show today. Black managers in Major League Baseball. We're still in the year of 2018. That one third of all Major League teams have never had a black manager. How come this isn't discussed a lot? There's so much talk we hear about the need for equality, the need for people to be treated fairly, for everybody to have the same and most fair opportunity. Yet one third of all Major League Baseball teams have never in their history had a black manager, including the Yankees, including the Red Sox, including the Phillies, Braves, and Cardinals, all teams that go back to the 1800s. The Yankees, Red Sox, Athletics, and Tigers and twins, by the way, who were the Washington Senators, all were original American League teams in 1901. So it's something that I don't know why it hasn't changed, but most importantly, I don't understand that why this is an issue that's not brought up. You know, speaking of race, was it involved with that wrestler that was told to cut his hair in New Jersey? Was racism involved there? I don't know. It could have just been a rep. The referee could have just been a jerk. But obviously, if you're talking about a white referee and a black wrestler, then yeah, you know, there could be racial implications there. But the bottom line is when you're talking about a series of years where many women and many men with long hair have wrestled and not been asked to cut their hair, why in this particular instance was this wrestler asked to cut his hair? NFL picks, they're up on JohnPielli.com. Once again, this is the Past Ball Show brought to you by JohnPielli.com as well as St. Aloysius Church and School in Jackson, New Jersey. Glad to be with you. Hope everybody enjoys your weekend. Probably not going to get on with you again before Christmas. So hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. Hope everybody enjoys their holidays. I hope uh, the, the holidays are used as a bonding time to be with your family, to be with those that you love, to be with those that you care about. And don't make it about money, because it really isn't. We make, you know, the holidays about spending money, having, you know, extravagant dinners. But it really isn't about that. It's about the bond that we have amongst people, the bond that we have uh, amongst family. And for those that don't have as much close family, the bond that we can have amongst those that we care about and we love. And you, you sit there at a table sharing a dinner. 
with, you know, hopefully your family. If not, your close friends, but the people that are in your most intimate inner circle. And you can think about, as years are going to go by, not everybody's going to be sitting at that same table. And I tell you, it chokes me up when I think about it. It makes me want to embrace, you know, family and holidays and cherish the time that I have. So I know I'm not going to be here forever. But uh, I also know over time that those are that are the closest to me may not be either. And I hope everybody thinks about that. Because when the holidays get thrown and, and it's all about spending money, spending money, or everybody feels obligated to have to get this gift or have to spend this amount of money to do this or to do that, I hope they're not doing it at the expense of the close people that are in their lives, their family members. Because I think it would be very foolish to make it about money and make it about things that are not that important. When it comes to those family members that may next year, may the year after, or may five years, or may in 10 years, or may in 20 years, not be sitting at that same dinner table with you. And I hope while you're out there making your holidays about money and about spending, I hope you factor that in when you're sitting there and there's an empty chair at that table. Once again, this is the Past Ball Show brought to you by JohnPielli.com. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, if this show is a little bit too early for you, it's going to be available on iTunes, on Google Play, as well as YouTube. So we'll get the show up there. Once again, you look at the title of the show. Those were the topics that I covered today. So I uh, hope everybody enjoys the rest of their weekend. Once again, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, God bless you. And as always, I'll see you on the other side.